The split column tool was a tool which we um, we acquired from our Struxoft guys here at Greytech, um, and we added to the power pack um, a couple of years ago. But it had a limitation, and that was the fact that it would always cut. It would only cut um, vertical columns. We've now added the functionality to allow it to, to split um, slanted columns, both using at point, which you've just done there, at level, so we can actually use the, the level itself to split it. And we've also got the ability to use reference planes. So we've got some really good control on how these elements are actually split. But the enhancement that we've now done, not, not only does it now work on um, slanted columns, but if we actually select the tool using the shift key, this will actually allow us, rather than cutting perpendicular, this will actually allow us to put a horizontal cut using exactly the same tool. So press shift, we can select the um, slanted column, we select a point, hit finish and as you can see we can now put a horizontal cut in there and as I say this will also work if we then go back in and use the same process shift select by level then we can do the same thing we can use our level lines and of course as you would expect from the tool if it works on point and on level then it's also going to work using our reference plane and here we go Remember, press the shift key if you want it horizontal rather than perpendicular. Nice little improvement, um, but basically requested so that slanted beams. And once you've done that, if it wasn't if it was a steel beam, all the steel connections will actually work on them as well. So it doesn't affect the way that the tool works. The Element Lookup tool has been enhanced in two ways. Firstly, the user interface has had a, a makeover. But what we've also done is we've added in a second tab now called Colorize. This will allow us to search for um, categories and a parameter within that category where the values vary. And it will give us a list of all the elements with a varying value. And we can isolate them elements just like we could before um, with the normal element lookup. But what we can also do is we can then start to look at adding colors. So what we can do is we can search. Each time we click the color selector, it will give us another random set until we get a set that we're happy with. We can then apply them colors. So it will actually apply the colors to that um, view. Obviously, most importantly, um, we might not want it on the 3D view. We can select the views that we want to apply the, the color colors to. So we can add them color filters to any view we want. And then we can also create a legend because we need to generate a legend so that when we place these views on a drawing, we've got a visual representation of what each of these colors mean. So we can select the parameters we want to include in that legend and then it will automatically generate the legend with the colors that we specified. We can then, if we want, in the 3D view where we specify, and we can revert this back. This will obviously not affect the elevation that we applied them to earlier. The numbering tool is probably one of my favorite tools within the Power Pack, allowing us to number absolutely anything. This is a very powerful tool which we've enhanced this year, particularly when it comes to nested families. The sequencing before would not guarantee that the nested elements would be grouped with the host. We've now improved that so that these elements will actually be numbered accordingly. So in this example, we select pile caps and we select the um, structural foundation elements that we want you to number. These are nested um, pile caps with a separate pile. And we can choose which we want. We click OK. We know exactly how many elements in total we are going to number. But this is where the numbering sequence comes in. So if we now zoom into this first pile cap, the cap itself is going to be 1. And then when we click onto the individual elements, they will be numbered accordingly. Now obviously we could use our filters so that the pile caps are C and the piles are P. So we can do that, but because it will number them by the host we can group these elements together which was something that we struggled to do before 
another really um, useful enhancement and this was a, a customer request from several customers as was the um, nested families as well was the ability to highlight the elements on one by one so it seems like a nice little uh, simple improvement but we can actually now see which elements we are numbering okay so we can come in we do one by one we know how many it's going to be number click OK this will now go in and exclusively number only the elements that we've got selected so we can go in we can see how the numbers have changed on the elements that we've got this obviously will not affect anything else other than the, the um, elements that we selected in the pick one by one a really powerful enhancement to an already very very powerful tool We now have a brand new an analytical model check tool. This tool will allow us to check um, nodes to analytical members, nodes to panels, or panels and members. We can set a tolerance for what is an acceptable disconnect, and then we can run the check. We can then see all the issues that we have in the model displayed by these red spheres. The spheres can be hidden, so we don't get them in the way. We can also change the size of them. If you've got a lot of errors in one place, it might look a little bit confusing so we can reduce them so we can see them um, a little bit clearer these spheres can be seen in plan section and obviously within the 3d view as well even in wireframe we can isolate just the errors we can zoom and isolate a particular problem so that we can then resolve it before we send it off to be analyzed Before Autodesk changed the analytical model inside of Revit, analytical elements were colour-coded um, generation, but um, Autodesk introduced a new method using a Dynamo script to actually generate um, the analytical model. Um, we um, replaced this tool because it was quite slow with our own tool um, to do the same job, and we've enhanced it this year. So now if we do, if we convert the model into an analytical model using um, the Graytech tool, um, it will actually color code the components. Not only is it a lot quicker, only taking 13 seconds as opposed to 55 seconds, all the elements are color coded. Orange for beams, um, blue for columns, cyan for walls, orange for openings, um, light brown for slabs, and we now have a nicely colour coded model just as we used to have. We've improved our BIM Connect software um, by giving it the ability to import reinforcement from TriCalc. So TriCalc is a great tech um, structural analysis package um, based in the Iberia region. So as we can see here, we are now in um, TriCalc and we now have the ability to export um, a DTCX file containing um, the entire model, part of the model and all the reinforcement that's been designed in there. Once that's been exported, um, we can pop over here, click on our BIM Connect and on the import, we can now import that file and there's an option in that dialog box to choose to import just a structure or also the reinforcement cages as well. We can map the section sizes that we're actually using in the model and click OK. This will now import the structure and also all the reinforcements. So when this comes in, now let's put the reinforcement in. Let's go to a 3D view and in the 3D view you can actually see now that all the designed reinforcement. Now this has come across correctly. This is now Revit reinforcement. You can use all the Revit native Revit tools to do to edit it and document. The watermark manager was added a few years ago to help manufacturers protect their intellectual property. It only had three parameters that we could add in there and this year we've enhanced it so that we can actually create custom parameters so here we are we select the family that we want to add our watermark to and we can add the standard three 
parameters. But now here we have the ability to create our own custom parameters, as many as we want, that we want to add additional data into our family. Once we apply that, we add a password. This will actually allow us to remove it later on. And this data is actually entered into the file structure and it cannot be deleted. The only way to delete the watermark is through the watermark manager. Once that's been added, we can test it and we can see actually in the family when we load it in that some of the information is visible and it's visible in the family, but editing it in the family does not remove it from the watermark. This is embedded deep inside the file itself. And as I say, we can remove it with a watermark manager, but this now protects that information. And if you suspect someone has got your family and your IP, we can check by using the watermark manager.